first here, computer scientists and academics pursue efforts to stop crypto lobbying in the U.S. Crypto skeptics have urged American legislators to be wary of pro-crypto lobbying groups. These experts believe that crypto assets are too volatile and insecure to be relied upon. Bruce Schneier, a lecturer at Harvard, recently stated that blockchain advocates claims do not hold true. He went on to say that the technology is not secure and lacks decentralization. According to Bruce, systems where one could lose their life savings upon forgetting a password are not safe systems. As a computer scientist and academic, Bruce signed a letter criticizing crypto and blockchain and sent it to U.S. lawmakers in Washington. Deal noted that the letter is an effort for counter lobbying since crypto supporters only say what they want to the politicians. In the letter, the signatories stated that cryptocurrencies are risky, flawed, and unproven digital financial instruments. They advise regulators to be cautious of pro-crypto lobbyists who may try to create a regulatory safe haven for these assets. As the crypto industry grew from 2018 to 2021, so did the number of lobbyists representing crypto interests. According to data from Public Citizen, the budget spent on crypto lobbying also grew from $2.2 million to $9 million during those years. This increase in lobbying activity came amid efforts to combat crypto lobbying. Just yesterday, the U.S. Federal Reserve published a study that examined the potential effects of central bank digital currencies on the implementation of U.S. monetary policies. The study highlighted scenarios that could happen in the event that a CBDC is implemented. In particular, the study explored how a CBDC could affect the functioning of financial markets and the economy more broadly. Meanwhile, analysts have differing opinions on the U.S. Federal Reserve's quantitative tightening that is set to begin on Wednesday. Pav Hundel, an executive at Swift Swift X exchange told Cointelegraph that this could have a negative effect on crypto markets. Conversely, Nigel Green, CEO of DeVere Group, believes that the impact could be minimal. So again, controversy. Um, some people think yes, some people think no. Uh, you know, there's always going to be naysayers against crypto. Up next here, NY Fed president urges colleagues to prepare for coming digital payment transformation. John Williams, president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, told central bank officials, academics, and financial industry leaders from around the world on Wednesday that a fundamental change in money and payments is coming. Williams delivered the opening remarks at an invitation-only workshop on monetary policy implementation co-hosted by the New York Fed and Columbia University. The central banker acknowledged that some digital assets have the potential for innovation, but noted that not all cryptocurrencies are backed by non-crypto assets. Right, and I think most people who are involved in the crypto industry know that, um, but I guess for new people they don't. He emphasized that CBDCs and stablecoins backed by safe, liquid assets are more likely to be successful. Williams did not go into detail about the potential future impact of digital currency. He instead placed it in context, context by discussing the changes that overnight reverse repurchase on RP, RRP agreements have made since 2014. With $2 trillion of on RRP agreements now in place, the structure of the Fed's balance sheet has changed dramatically. An on RRP is an agreement between a Federal Reserve Bank and an eligible financial institution in which the bank will sell a security to the institution and buy it back the next day. The purpose of this is to keep the federal fund rate within a target range. Introducing a CBDC could potentially destabilize interest rates. No matter how much technology changes, the central bank's role remains the same, Williams said. He emphasized that it's important for central bankers to stay focused on their responsibilities and stay up to date with the world. A U.S. CBDC has been the topic of much discussion and controversy within the government. The Fed has stated that ideally it would have a congressional mandate before issuing one. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you think the U.S. should implement a CBDC? Why or why not? Um, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, we've talked about CBDCs a good bit on, on this channel. Um, I think, again, still, it's giving the government control of it, which is kind of the point of having a digital asset is be your own bank. So it's interesting. Up next here, former product manager at OpenSea charged with insider trading. 
On Wednesday, Nathaniel Chastain was charged with insider trading by United States prosecutors in Manhattan. Chastain is a former product manager at OpenSea, the largest NFT marketplace. This will be the first case of its kind involving digital assets and traditional criminal investigation. Prosecutors claim that Chastain purchased 45 NFTs through anonymous hot wallets and anonymous accounts on OpenSea and then sold them for a profit shortly thereafter. He is accused of buying them shortly before they were featured on the OpenSea Marketplace homepage and selling them for a profit right after. As a product manager, it would have been in his power to choose which NFTs were featured, giving him direct access to the insider information that he himself created. On September 14th, 2021, 11 trades were made that included the NFT called Spectrum of a Ram Ramin Ramification Theory. That's it. The following morning, the NFT was sold for almost four times the buying price. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams commented on his office's commitment to investigate insider trading in all of its forms. Chastain was charged with money laundering and wire fraud, both of which carry a maximum 20-year prison sentence. OpenSea conducted an investigation after learning about Chastain's activities and found that he had violated company policy. Chastain was asked to leave and soon after he quit voluntarily to work on his own project Oval. Recently, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong responded to allegations of insider trading. The individuals involved could have been either connected to Coinbase or employees. <clears throat> Although Armstrong did not confirm any disciplinary actions or criminal charges toward his employees, he did say that Coinbase was planning to revise its listing process soon to prevent it from happening. So, you know, things happen. There's bad apples in every sector that you're that you could be involved in. You know, it's just frustrating that people continue to do it in crypto. I mean, you know, for every bad scenario we hear of there's so many more good ones people are using it for good but it's just frustrating because while it's still trying to get its feet you know into the mainstream you know it's frustrating that these things keep happening up next here canadian by the canadians by the dip as purpose bitcoin etf holdings reach new highs despite the recent price correction which took bitcoin as low as twenty three thousand eight hundred dollars institutional investors appear to be maintaining their confidence in the cryptocurrency the purpose of the Bitcoin F, Bitcoin ETF, which was launched in February 2021, has been to see a consistent inflow over the last five trading days. The fund's holdings have increased to 43,701 BTC as of Tuesday, according to Glassnode data reported by Jan Westenfeld. That is the highest level on record. On Thursday, the Canadian Bitcoin ETF purchased 2,006 BTC, and on Tuesday, it purchased 2,780 Bitcoin. According to data from CoinShares, digital asset investment products saw $87 million in cumulative infos last week, with Bitcoin products accounting for $69 million of that total. This seems to align with the broader short-term tendency of institutional buyers to invest in crypto again. The recent market collapse caused a significant outflow of digital assets from institutional investors, totaling $141 million in the week of May 24th. However, this news provides relief as it marks the highest outflow since July 2021. According to the CoinShares report, the total assets under management metric is currently at its lowest point since mid-2021. Some institutional buyers appear to be waiting for lower prices before investing in crypto again. Analysts are predicting that the market will continue to decline in the short term, with Bitcoin prices potentially dropping as low as 14,000. They believe that the recent surge in prices was simply a bull trap and that the market is not ready for a sustained rebound yet. However, long-term prospects remain positive with investors continuing to accumulate Bitcoin and young people remaining bullish on the cryptocurrency. Are you guys bullish or bearish on Bitcoin? What do you guys think? I mean, I think we're gonna hit see some down coming up here. Um, hopefully your rebound is in the works within the next few months. Up next here, Binance's CZ says he is skeptical about the Terra relaunch. Binance CEO Chengpeng Zhao, also known as CZ, has expressed skepticism about the revival plan for the Terra ecosystem and the launch of the new Luna token. CZ said that he doesn't try to predict what the community will do, although many people are skeptical. He added that he is one of those guys. CZ has criticized the Terra USD team for their handling of the recent collapse of the stablecoin and has pointed to flaws in the project that he believes led to the crash. However, Binance is now actively participating in Terra's revival by hosting the airdrop of the new Luna token. 
As CZ pointed out, despite the widespread skepticism around the Terra relaunch, Binance has a responsibility to help users affected by the crash of Luna. CZ said that people's access to liquidity is still a top priority. He said that they have to support the revival plan and hope that it will work. CZ believes that the Terra incident should serve as a warning to other projects that rely on business models that are not sustainable in the long term and that use aggressive incentives. <clears throat> as he pointed out, crypto projects such as Terra offer high yields to attract people in. Once there are enough users, these projects become profitable. CZ noted that we should evaluate them based on how much revenue and income they generate, rather than just how much of an incentive payout that they provide. Uh, you can check out the full interview on Cointelegraph's YouTube channel there if you're interested in hearing more about what he has to say in regard to that. I think it's you know nice for the people affected by it that they are still, the Binance is still helping in the relaunch. And last but not least here, Apple's upcoming developer conference sparks rumors of NFT trading cards. I would not be surprised. Apple has announced that it will be showcasing the developments of four new devices and software models at the 33rd edition of the annual Worldwide Developers Conference, WWDC, which is set to commence on June 6th. These new devices and software models include iOS 15, iPad OS 15, Mac OS Monterey, and Watch OS 8. Apple fans were excited Decided to discover that the Memoji characters in iOS 12 beta 2 trigger an augmented reality mode with three trading card characters available to be claimed. Apple has used Memoji characters as part of its branding strategy for the past few years. The company has used these characters to create memes and mascot brand marketing. So here is some of these characters here. At WWDC, it is expected that these cards will be positioned as Web2 elements that are only for collectible purposes with no intrinsic or tradable value. Some members of the NFT community have speculated that Apple may release its own NFTs in the future based on the similarity of the Easter egg avatars to the Clone X avatars from the RTFKT Studios and the VFriend Series 2 animated cards from Gary Vaynerchuk. During Apple's Q1 2022 earnings call, CEO Tim Cook expressed optimism for the societal adoption of augmented reality and metaverse technologies. Cook outlined the company's intentions to invest accordingly in the emerging sector. Apple's mixed re reality headset, which offers both virtual and augmented reality functionalities, was originally slated to be released during the WWDC conference. However, after experiencing technical difficulties during development, it now seems unlikely that the headset will be released at that time. The company has applied for a trademark license for Reality OS, which is said to be the operating software for the mixed reality headset. So that's exciting. If you're an Apple user, um, you know, some cool things coming soon. That is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment on what you want to see in a future video, and we'll see you next time.